It's the quickest way to get your product stack reverse engineered not to release Linux drivers. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly. Daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and everybody watching us live on Twitch. Hello. Hi, we've been sitting around talking, you know, doing the thing because we're getting older and like, well, oh, I was talking about old computers. I try to avoid doing yeah. that, but you know what? <laughs> every now and then, you know, every couple of months, maybe you can indulge yourself and yeah. talk about some of the fun things. But got a fun show for you this week. Jill wants to start off with a small um, doctoral <laughs> thesis about yes. the A770, a uh, vintage graphics card, because they're collector items. What you didn't get the Arc one, though, um, the Intel one, but you got the who was it? Got Azeroc? the Phantom, um, the Azrock Phantom. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> the camera's over here. I mean, maybe it doesn't matter. Just point it at a camera. I'm sure somebody is watching. Yeah. <laughs> the Azrock uh, Phantom Gaming Overclocked Intel Arc A7070 with 16 megabytes of RAM. And it's a megabytes, sweet card. Huh? All right. Oh, megabytes. Oh, sorry, gigs. <laughs> 16 gigs. We were just talking about old computers, so they have that in my head. <laughs> 16 <right>. gigs. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's 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 uh, one of the only art cards that is three fans. Has three fans, and it's in this beautiful pink, you know, sixties uh, modern uh, case right here. <laughs> and it's got lots of pink and rainbow RGB, but I currently have it off because it was making too much noise in my mic because it's right next to. Me and my mic. <laughs> so anyways, um, it's got a Ryzen uh, 5 5600X, 6-core, 12-thread CPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM, an Asus B550 motherboard, a Sabrant Rocket, 1 terabyte of NVMe M.2, 4.0 SSD. I, I wanted that extra speed. And it's got Ubuntu 23.10, which was just installed alongside... Pop OS 22.04 on this machine. And I actually, I wanted to, wanted to give you guys all an update on my uh, Arc GPU Linux adventures. So I first installed Pop OS 22.04 several weeks ago, and the Arc A7070 booted and loaded, but Steam and several other apps wouldn't launch. And it's kind of what I expected, but I was happy it booted. <laughs> <laughs> and and to a graphical desktop. And a lot of people had issues with the Intel art cards playing nice, particularly on Pop! OS. But I was determined to get everything working correctly and use my Linux foo. I then updated the Linux kernel to 6.5.4 from kernel 5.19 that I had in Pop! OS, which, uh, as a lot of you might know, Pop! OS is based on Ubuntu LTS 22.04. And then after that, I updated the Mesa drivers to experimental 23.1.3 PPA and Steam loaded and all the games I played work great, like Tal's Principle, Trackmania Stadium 2, which we play on uh, Tuesdays and Fridays here on Linux Gamecast. And Refunct, one of my other favorite games was working and Counter-Strike 2 and a whole slew of ones I usually play. They were all just working great out of the box. But as for many people on both Linux and Windows, you know, regardless of what GPU they used, Cyberpunk 2077 would just black out when I tried to boot it and give an error message. And then actually on Monday night, I installed Ubuntu 23.10 alongside my Pop! OS 22.04 on this new machine. And after spending several hours troubleshooting, I got Cyberpunk 2077 to launch and play great on Ubuntu 23.10 on my Intel Arc GPU. <laughs> I was so happy because so many people had you know, problems, not just with, you know, AMD NVIDIA, but of course with uh, getting it to run on the Arc GPUs. So I, I actually switched to using an older version of Proton 7.0-6, and that seemed to do the trick. And I set um, a bunch of launch options to skip the intro and the start screen and all that. And it worked. It, what was interesting is I thought it would work with the uh, uh, Glorious Egg Rolls pr Proton, but it didn't. 
<laughs> so I was surprised by that. <laughs> but it liked the older Proton. And I got 48 frames per second on ultra settings, 65 frames per second on high settings, and 80 frames per second on medium settings at 1440p. So that was pretty good <laughs> for Cyberpunk 2077. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of this has to do with the newer Mesa 23.2 drivers installed on Ubuntu 23.10. And when they land in Ubuntu 22.04 LTS, Cyberpunk 2077 should work on Pop! OS just fine. And I actually posted my picks and results in our LGC Discord chat and had a lot of fun talking to Strider, MD, Jalad, Linux Gunaru, and Mirror PPC during my Intel Arc GPU journey. And I know uh, uh, Ven just scrolled through them on um, my imager post <laughs> through all the specs and all my settings. <laughs> so anyways, that is the big update on what's going on with my Arc GPU. And it's right here. <laughs> so <laughs> yay, it's been so much fun playing with it. And yeah, this is, I actually had another um, motherboard and uh, GPU in here, but I um, uh, updated it and updated uh, the motherboard and RAM, and of course I put the art card in this case. And this this little case, it doesn't have the best airflow because <laughs> it's it's it, it you bought you buy it for the design, not for the airflow. So it's taken quite a bit to to get things to stay cool, but it's done it does a pretty good good job. It's, it stays about 40 Celsius on, I'm gonna on normal load. I'm going to leave the side load. panel off and don't mind the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. everything's thermal. Yeah. yeah. But I am I'm actually thinking of putting some holes on the top and, and one of the side panels because the side panels have, have... They do have little vent holes and that does help, but it, I need a bigger hole. <laughs> so, But it's just a beautiful, freaking beautiful case and I love it. And I have two of them. I have a pink one and a yellow one. Uh, behind me you can see a little bit of it back there and uh yeah so i have a have a have a yellow uh, setup too that's bee themed for bees because it's, it's yellow <laughs> so do you like it i love it i absolutely love it it's 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 been a really good card and uh i've done i've already done what probably about 50 hours of testing on it <laughs> all right and I'm going to be using it in here probably starting next week. So <laughs> I'm excited. So it's going to be my new podcasting rig. Yeah, I and, still want to get one to play around with because there's, I mean, there's yeah. on the compute side because I still got a bunch of questions. Like, as far as the gaming stuff, a lot of that's been sussed out, which is yeah. good mm -hmm. on the ARC side because, I mean, they're afford affordable cards and they're new. You know, they have A1, AV1 and go, yeah. you can get 16 gigs. And you got that one for a reasonable price, too, like 300 bucks, right? Yeah, 330 yeah. yeah, which is very good. You can actually, there was one that just went on sale for 260 and that's that's really good. <laughs> it, again, yeah. if I run across the 770 for like that 250 260 maybe even like 280 I'm just going to buy one to play. Because yeah. I got questions, too. Mine are a little different than Jill's, but. Yeah, you could use them for encoding and and put it in as a second video card, you know, in your well, I want to see. <laughs> what it can do like how many hoops we have to jump through to get it to do um some basic compute stuff and see if it is even possible to get it up and running reliably with um davinci result so i'm glad you like it having mm -hmm. a good time with it nothing's exploded um I, you know what i am kind of afraid we had a little bit of a, a technical fire just a minute ago so i think your <laughs> yeah. amd card is upset with you oh okay <laughs> my rx 6950 no it's not happy <laughs> It doesn't want to be replaced. <laughs> yes. So you better watch out for it. It might be a little shifty. That's very might be true. Up to other <laughs> types of things. Um, so if you're in our Discord, if you are a Twitch sub or a patron, you can hop into our Discord. Just link it up. You'll notice I posted a uh, email I got like after the show, like almost right after the show last week, from my buddy Tack. If you keep track, I do a, um, a series showing people how to just get up and running with your Fireware audio interfaces and. Tack used his big boy email address. That was like Takashi at kernel.org because he's a kernel developer. He's the maintainer for the Firewire stack now. How that times have changed. And he mm -hmm. sent me a message and he was like, Vin, you need to let people know about this. This is critical. I don't know how critical this is, but I still want to uh, 
let people know about it. So if you were running kernel 6.5 and mm-hmm. you got a VIA chipset this entire time, anytime I've ever done a video, <laughs> I'm like, get the Texas Instruments, Firewire, PCI Express, or with the Texas Instrument chip, don't get the VIA chipsets. People are like, whatever, then my VIA is working. Not anymore. Mm, um, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. And the reason I want to bring this up is, you know, if you got something that looks like this, well, you know, next time you go to start up your computer after installing kernel 6.5, it's just going to spontaneously reboot among other wild and wacky things. There's been reports coming in uh, through Bugzilla for um, SUSE, and um, this is on Fedora 38. And Tack wrote me an email to like explain what was going on. It was kind of long, kind of technical, but you know, just to summarize it, he's like, this is a deep technical problem. It's not going to be a quick fix. And he's not hundred percent exactly what's causing it right now. Mm. Moral of the story is go buy a $20 or $30 or $60 um, TI chipset. There's a recommendation on go to linuxgamecast.com, go to our about, go to our studio equipment. I don't care where you buy it. But all the FireWire cards that I use, which will not be affected by this, are on the um, PC hardware section on our Amazon Ideas thing, whatever it's called. You've been there. Take a look at it. So, yeah, that, that was kind mm-hmm. of surprising. So, um, also high tech. He's like, I watched the show. Thanks. Oh, awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, we got that going on. So I just wanted to let everybody know about it. Is there anything else I was up to? No, I think that was about it. Oh, I, I got a floppy camera lens in. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a different, yeah, different angle. Now it's like a week. wider shot. Yeah, much wider shot. Yeah, we're, I like it. Coming <laughs> through, uh, I, I think this one's from like early 70s, so like 71, 73. This is a Vivitar lens. This is what I was planning on getting, which I have this exact same lens, except it's for Olympus camera now. Mm. This is the one for Nikon. And it was like nine dollars. Oh like, wow, that's amazing! Like nine bucks. I'm like, okay. It's like everything works. You know, it's, it's a bit knackered. You know, it's clearly been used. You know, it's a forty year old lens. And uh, a guy was like, "It's a little wobbly." I'm like, what does that even mean? You know what? For nine bucks, we're going to find out what wobbly means. And like right around the aperture ring, it's a it's a little wobbly. And to to its credit, it doesn't click into place anymore. It's so old. So, mm. but it works. It works good. For it nine looks bucks. really nice. Yeah, for nine dollars, that looks it looks beautiful. Just playing man. around with it, I was like, why not? Let's just plug that in. Plug that into my modern uh, modern DSLR. The only thing you can get DSLRs anymore, but um, modern ish digital camera, and uh, every, everything worked. So that's my story. All right, Jill, I don't want you to disappear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about this new version of Ubuntu, everybody's favorite version of Debian with a body kit and the fart box muffler. Yes, <laughs> the fart box muffler. I love it. So Ubuntu 23.10 Mantic Monitor has been released and is now available to download. This is actually a short term release with nine months of support with all the latest and greatest drivers and Linux kernel that Ubuntu can offer. And Ubuntu 23.10 is actually using Linux kernel 6.5 and Mesa 23.2, which is the latest stable release of Mesa with updated Vulkan and OpenGL drivers. It features the latest GNOME 45 desktop environment, which features a keyboard backlight, quick setting, a new activities and camera indicator, and revamped settings and Nautilus file manager. So I installed Ubuntu 23.10 on my new pink video casting rig I just showed. And uh, it is working beautifully. Um, It's running alongside uh, my Pop! OS 22.04 installed on the same machine. And it it had no problems detecting Pop. And like all good Ubuntu distros should detect other uh, Ubuntu-based distros. (laughs) and uh, other distros for that matter, like uh, Arch or Suse. 
you can mix and match. <laughs> so, but I really love the speed and simplicity of the Flutter installer. It even asked if I would like to upgrade it on GitHub before installing. And I thought that was brilliant, like right during the install. Do you wanna upgrade? There's a new Flutter installer. I actually didn't do it because I wanted to use the vanilla installer to see how it worked. And the, the, the Flutter-based App Center loads Oh my God, Ven, so much faster than the previous Ubuntu App Center. It is also pleasing to the eye and much more organized. They have nailed it. We finally have an App Center that works, works quick, is organized really nice. It's so much better than the old one. <laughs> and just overall, I like the fit, the polish, and the speed of Ubuntu 23.10. That's pretty neat. And a couple of things I noticed, you know, we got the new version of Thunderbird, we got LibreOffice shot well transmission, and it's kernel 6.5. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if, if you skipped over the beginning of this video and you got a FireWire card, you better watch out. Get one of these later Ooh, on. Yes. Check under your bed. <laughs> this is do. <laughs> what I call the uh, YouTuber special, the Focus Bright, yeah. the Scarlet series. This is a, now an old Gen 3, Gen 4 zone. These are USB devices. They're class compliant. There's not much in the way of smarts inside these things. You just kind of plug them in and they start working. But if you have like a 4i4 or a 16i, whatever the larger ones are, they have internal mixers. And, um, but more to the point, the Gen 4s have gotten rid of uh, a lot of the front panel buttons. So things like phantom power and the air filters, you need software to engage them. And that's mm -hmm. going to be a problem on Linux because that's not class compliant to the USB standard. Well, somebody's been working on that. They're like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, Joffrey, Goffrey, not that one, not Game of Thrones Goffrey. He's not grown up and went into Linux uh, audio development. Nay, this is a different one. He does work on the Mixer series, this guy right here, the Ulsa Scarlet. Oh, he's been working on this since like uh, 2022. And it currently supports Gen 2, Gen 3, the Claret series, and it gets the job done. What's fascinating about this is over at Linux Musicians, he's like, hey, Jeffrey did. He said, I want to be proactive about this. I want to go out and just buy these interfaces, the new Gen 4s, and have them so I can start reverse engineering and get all this stuff set up ahead of time. And he set up a GoFundMe page which is a great way to do it, you know, for a good project like this. You know, it's not like I need VBox or something like that for Fortnite or whatever. And, you know, a lot of people kicked in. They're like, yeah, we want you to do this, make sure it's together and uh, up and working so we can just buy the Gen 4 Scarlet series and plug them in, get that installed, and it'll be good to go. Where this got interesting is it closed uh, last week, this GoFundMe, and it was successful. but. The final pledge was made by Focusrite themselves. Mm -hmm. They showed up. Uh, they even rang him up and they talked about, you know, hey, how can we help with future development? Really excited to see this. So Focusrite's doing good, but I, I want to thank PreSotus because PreSotus has made everyone blink that it's confused people. Like, why is PreSotus releasing this digital audio workstation and planning on adding support for their hardware. What's going on? What do they know that we don't? Yeah. <laughs> you got any thoughts on this? Oh, those, uh, it's just freaking awesome for uh, PreSonos and uh, Focusrite. I think, you know, it was, it, it was funny because we were talking about this. I was remembering that Matthew, when he used to do LWW, he was using a uh, Focusrite uh, USB interface as well, and he still has it. <laughs> So this is going to be good for him, too. <laughs> I think it's great. I think yeah. it's great. It's, it's weird how this stuff happens. It takes place. And there it is. Like you, I would have never in a million years, you know, when um, Jeffrey launched his GoFundMe. I'm like, hope everybody kicks in. I hope you get the hardware. And um, we all benefit from it. But for Focus Right to just show up and, like, give that final pledge to make sure. I know. It, that, then, that was awesome go through the effort of like we need to get on a call so we can talk like, oh that's really cool yeah that that you know thank you so much for supporting open source software you know that that makes your hardware work on linux <laughs> it's very important <laughs> you, you got people <laughs> yeah <laughs> willing to do the work for you take advantage of it yeah. and i will always say the quickest way 
and support them. To what you're going to get right here is what was taking place. The quickest way to get your product stack reverse engineered is not to release Linux drivers. To have someone else do it. <laughs> well, you, without your yeah. input or anything, I mean, you will get your product yeah. reverse engineered because that's what Jeffrey was doing. And that's what they yeah. go me for. He's like, I will reverse engineer this and make it work on Linux. So, um, absolutely. Yeah. Help out the people trying to help you out. Now, mm -hmm. Slice of Pie this week is going to start with a new version of the operating system that made me have to reshoot a video. A new version of the Raspberry Pi OS has been released, and this one is actually based on Debian Bookworm. Yay! And there are actually some major changes to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Huge. This is, this is a huge release. It is using Wayland instead of the X11 display drive server. Yes, Wayland on a Raspberry Pi on a, a single board computer. I just... You, it's, That's where Wayland makes sense. That's where like <laughs> more Wayland is installed on SBCs uh -huh. and embedded devices than desktops by a boatload. Yeah, yeah. And it makes it it does make sense. And the compositor actually was switched from Mutter to Wayfire. And Wayfire uses the WL Roots Wayland library. And uh, in fact, that's also the one XFCE is, is relying on is, is WL roots instead of X Wayland. That's interesting. So, and actually when you boot the Raspberry Pi OS on a Pi 4 or Pi 5, you will be using a Wayfire desktop. And there is actually a new power plugin which monitors for power supply problems like USB overcurrent issues. And a new GPU plugin that works like the CPU plugin does, which gives you a graph of the load on the on Raspberry Pi's uh, GPU. I always love those uh, plugins. And Pipewire is the new audio server. Really wonderful. <laughs> Y'all mess me up with this. Okay. Because all the way back in uh, 2020. Someone did manage to get, you know, they basically tricked a Raspberry Pi into running a Jitsi server. And it required compiling, repackaging Java, a little bit of prayer, but it worked. And mm -hmm. by worked, I mean functioned, air quotes around it, on a LAN with a self-signed certificate. And that was really about all you could do. However, back in August of 2021, Jitsi edits just straight up official support for ARM64. So I was like, you know, it'd be cool to do a video. Unfortunately, Around that time, a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig would set you back about 180, 200 bucks. So I really didn't want to do a video of like, here's a way to spend more than just buying a like used Dell PC. It didn't make sense financially to do the video, and uh, but I had a Pi 4. Nature's healing, everybody. Pi 4 stock is pretty much stabilized, so you can get them from MSRP. Good time to release this video. And you know what is Jitsi? It's WebRTC. It's conferencing. And what I wanted to show everybody is something that's missing in every other video on the internet about this. What's the load on a Raspberry Pi to have actual people in the conference talking? Because everybody's like, hey, here's a picture of, you know, me by myself with no one else. Um, <laughs> so what is the load? We can back this video up. Take a look right here. So, so this is effectively four people. This is two rooms with four people in it. And um, we're doing 720p. VP8, 30 frames per second, and that puts the Pi at about, you know, let's, let's be generous, let's say about 40% load, which is, you know, plus or minus, and you're using just under 900 megs of RAM. So you could easily get, you know, a six-person conference together on a Raspberry Pi 2 gig, and it's not going to be, you know, your biggest limitation here is going to be your bandwidth versus anything else. Now, let me be very clear. Video conferencing. We're not talking about doing, uh, I mean, you can do sh screen sharing and stuff like that. But if you're going to be recording, if you want to be pulling in phone calls and all, all the crazy other advanced moon stuff that you know people are doing, you don't want to do that on a Raspberry Pi. However, if you want to be like, mm -hmm. hey, Jill, how's it going? Yeah. And Jill could nope, be like, no hey, problem. Ben, doing all right? Mm -hmm. It works a treat for that. You know, if you want to pull up a call and you want to do it from home, yeah. Where you have control of everything, self-hosting. And, you know, we all have that bug. Most of us do anyway. You know, the first time you get a persistent online connection, you're like, let's set up a web server. <laughs> because we're broken individuals like that. So over at LinuxTeamCast.com, I give you a parts list. 
the ports you need. This is just a basic setup, you know, because there's a lot of stuff that, you know, the deeper I got into this, I'm like, man, you got to have to, you're going to have to do some Googling if you've never touched Linux, never done anything with networking, you know, because you're going to have to set up on a static IP address and all the things that go. And now you have to install Raspberry Pi OS Legacy, Jill. Because they yeah, messed me up. Because they, they messed you up. <laughs> changed the DHCPCD. Okay, so that's which an was issue a file in ETC. Okay. okay. <laughs> Something you got to do with. Um, it boggles my mind why this is. There's a uh, if you ever use the Raspberry Pi Imager. Now they finally because it used to be a hidden option to get to the advanced tab where you could set your Wi-Fi password and enable SSH. So, you know all the basic things that you're going to do to a Raspberry Pi to make it functional. Uh, it's now a cog, you know, clearly visible, but there's not an option to set a static IP address, your net mask and um, gateway in your DNS server for the LAN interface. So, you know, in order to do that with, you know, the previous version, now the legacy version, you could edit ETC and you could edit the file. And I show you how to do that in the video. Why? Because you got to be able to find it on your network, right? And you don't want a DHCP. I didn't want to get into like, how do you, uh, you know, make a DHC TD uh, assigned IP address static, which there's ways to do that. Easy way to do it. They changed in the new version of um, Bookworm. So I had to like ninja edit this, like use the previous version, but this thing gets you set up with it. it this will get you to the point where you're like, hmm, I can play around with this. That'd be kind of fun. I think it's brilliant, Vin. And it only takes five minutes of watching too. You, did it. you got it. You got so much information squished in five minutes. <laughs> well, you got to get it smashing. And like, there's other things here. There's a very particular version of Jitsi Meet because one thing, if you go back and let's say you follow, because this is not the only guide on the internet of like, how do you get Jitsi running a Raspberry Pi? Go ahead and try it. It's not going to work. Mm. Um, the latest version of Jitsi Meet uh, doesn't work with Chrome. So uh, keep that in mind. That's why on um, the install guide, I pinned it down to very particular version numbers. I'm like, you know what? This works. So as long as it's there, plug it in, go play with it. And um, yeah, use it to start your own podcast. Because yeah. all of our audio and video is coming over Jitsi right now. Yay. So lightning, power yeah. outage, what you yes. got? <laughs> Yeah, what you got? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it fire. for this. Right. We made it. Yeah. Let's roll we some made it. Aw, thank you, Don M, for the 35-month resub. Awesome on Twitch. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, boy. What a show, Ben. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, AV1 encoded in the pie would have been nice. I don't know how practical. I mean, <laughs> price-wise, that would have been. But, you know, hey. Hey, thanks everybody supporting the show. If you like what we do, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got a bunch of bonus mm -hmm. goodies, including if you want to watch this show train wreck and all, you know, for all hour and a half, yeah. two hours of it, we got it in podcast format Un just for you. Right. <laughs> oh, right. All of our chairlings, everybody, thank you so much. Yeah, we love you all. You make this possible. And I do want to, right at the end of the show, which I should have said at the beginning of the show, but we had so many things going on. Mm -hmm. I know YouTube is going crazy with like Adpocalypse and all that stuff. So what I'm going to be trying to do, and at least I'm going to be experimenting with it. I did it with Linux Gamecast. I've been doing it kind of on and off, but I'm going to try to stick to it is uh, on Patreon for just like our standard tiered above. There will be a rendered high quality version of this on Patreon, uh, not on YouTube. It's going to be hosted by Patreon completely ad free. So you don't have to worry about it. Nice. Yeah. I'm just playing. Awesome. No, I have to worry about anything. All right. <laughs> Cool, everybody. See you next week. Bye-bye.